Tell me if this sounds familiar. You've just started watching some new movie, TV show, book series, video game, or some other form of fiction. The premise seems cool, and it seems kind of mysterious. There's something going on that you don't quite understand. As the plot keeps going, though, it starts getting more complicated. Things get weirder, more confusing, and every question that gets answered just raises even more questions, and it just keeps going and going, and getting bigger and bigger until you can barely keep track of everything you've been told, and you're dying to know what the heck is going on, until you find yourself scouring the internet trying to find anyone who can explain it to you because you feel like you could sell both your kitties if you could just get some answers. <sighs> then you might have stumbled across a mystery box story. Definition on screen. But don't worry, this is what I'm here for. I made it my mission to break down and explain as many stories in this genre as possible. Then afterwards, I review and rate the mysteries using my 10 criteria for judging what makes an engaging mystery box. So, let's put on our hoodies and try to explain the plot of Mr. Robot. Mr. Robot is a USA original series created by Sam Esmail that ran from 2015 to 2019. It follows the black hat hacker Elliot Alderson as he tries to take down a giant evil megacorporation. At a glance it's just a show about hacking, but it doesn't take long to notice that there's more to this show than meets the eye. First, I'll summarize the plot from start to finish, to lay out all the information the show gives us before we can start tackling the major mysteries. The first season introduces us to Elliot, as he works as a cybersecurity engineer by day and hacker vigilante by night. He also has a drug problem and a mental illness of some kind that makes it hard for him to tell fantasy from reality. You'll quickly come to realize that the show lies to you and misleads you all the time, and encourages you to consider whether what you're seeing is really happening or if it's being filtered through Elliot's warped perspective. Like how the big evil corporation is called E-Corp, but everyone in the show calls it Evil Corp because that's Elliot's personal nickname for it. Elliot also has a habit of talking directly to the audience, calling you his imaginary friend. This actually happened, I'm talking to an imaginary person. The premise of the plot is that Elliot is motivated by revenge on Evil Corp for the cover-up of a toxic waste hazard in his hometown as a child, which led his father and his friend Angela's mother to die of cancer. He finds his way to a hacker group called F Society, run by the intense and ruthless Mr. Robot. Season 1 sees Elliot struggle to decide whether he wants to go along with Mr. Robot's plans until he fully commits to joining them. We also get to know a lot more about him and how he views the world. He grew up in an abusive household where his mother was cold and uncaring, and his dad, while generally kinder to him, also caused a lot of pain. Elliot recounts a story of when his father made him promise not to tell anyone about his cancer diagnosis, and when Elliot told his mom anyway, his dad pushed him out a window. F Society succeeds in dealing some serious blows to Evil Corp but the first season ends with a bombshell reveal that Mr. Robot is actually imaginary. He's an alternate personality of Elliot's, and really, Elliot founded F Society. Also, the form Mr. Robot takes is of Elliot's dead dad, and the name Mr. Robot was the name of his dad's computer repair store. Elliot, who are you talking to? You mean I'm talking to... And Darlene, another member of F Society, is actually Elliot's sister, and Elliot had somehow forgotten about her completely. This twist sets the stage for what to expect from the rest of the show. As much as the show is about rebellious hackers, it also dives into Elliot's unstable psychology and uses his perspective to mislead us. We're constantly trying to figure out what kinds of things Elliot has done off screen while Mr. Robot had control, that Elliot doesn't even know about. Season 2 has Elliot trying to control Mr. Robot by locking himself into a routine to train his mind to shut him out. He's removed himself from all technology to avoid the temptation of hacking. But a man named Ray approaches him and asks him to help with his website for selling illegal goods. Elliot eventually refuses and finds a way to turn Ray in, but the damage is done, and Mr. Robot has regained some control over his body and mind. We also discover the next big lie of the show. The whole second season so far has actually been taking place inside a prison. Elliot got arrested at the end of season 1 for hacking his therapist Krista's cheating abusive boyfriend and stealing his dog. Shortly after, he gets broken out by someone high up pulling the strings, the Dark Army. The Dark Army is a hacker group from China who works as an ally of F Society in the first season, and who turns out to be a lot more powerful than anyone originally realized. They're led by the mysterious White Rose. She's transgender, passing for male as a powerful Chinese government official in public, 
but in private, she's a powerful underworld figure, hellbent on manipulating the people and governments of the world for her own gain. But the Dark Army's specific end goals are a mystery. Also, Leon, Elliot's friend and fellow prisoner, turns out to be a Dark Army assassin sent to protect him, because they have big plans for Elliot and his hacking abilities. During the season, we're unsure whether the Dark Army is a friend or an enemy. Darlene and the other members of F-Society go on the run, because after F-Society member Romero is shot and killed, they believe that the Dark Army is trying to exterminate them all to cover the tracks. It turns out, though, that Romero actually died from a random stray bullet. That doesn't mean that the Dark Army is friendly, though. They can and will either kill you or force them to help you at any point, whatever serves their needs. There's also the plotline of the disappearance of Tyrell Wellick, the Evil Corp employee who seemed to join up with Mr. Robot at the end of Season 1, but then disappeared shortly afterwards. It turns out that Mr. Robot and the Dark Army arranged to more or less keep him prisoner while forcing him to continue the hack that would destroy Evil Corp for good. When Elliot finds this out, he tries to stop it, because by now he's come to believe that destroying Evil Corp would do more harm than good, and he ends up getting shot. Heading into Season 3, we get more and more of an idea of just how powerful the Dark Army is. They're basically an Illuminati-level organization with total control over everything that happens in the world. They even control Evil Corp. Elliot recognizes them and White Rose as the real enemy, and for the rest of the show, he's focused on taking them down, with the help of Mr. Robot, whom he's formed an uneasy truce with. Philip Price, the CEO of Evil Corp and the villain of the early seasons, begins to turn against his masters in the Dark Army. He also takes a special interest in Angela while she works for Evil Corp. It's revealed that this is because Price is Angela's biological father. As revenge for Price's disloyalty, White Rose recruits Angela to the Dark Army and then later kills her, just to mess with him. Soon we get a better glimpse of the Dark Army's endgame plans. It's revealed that it was White Rose who ordered Evil Corp to build their toxic waste plant in Elliot's hometown, and later she plans to move the operation to the Congo. Whatever this is, it seems to be the most important thing to her. Through what she tells Angela, it's hinted that somehow it has to do with bringing the dead back to life. In the final season, Elliot prepares for his final showdown against White Rose. Season 4 I think is the best season overall. The season opener hints at the idea that Elliot might have another personality, besides himself and Mr. Robot. We learn that Elliot created Mr. Robot to protect himself after his father abused him as a child. And also, Elliot's dad never pushed him out the window. Mr. Robot took control of his body and jumped to get away from his father. The show also implies that Elliot has separate personalities of his mother and his younger self hiding out in his mind as well. There are also some extended flashback sequences to dig into White Rose and the Dark Army. By the way, the Dark Army is just the name of the hacking segment of White Rose's organization. The name of the whole thing is the Deus Group, and White Rose built it in the 90s with the help of the early internet. The reason why she did all this is because she was once in love with a man who killed himself because China's anti-LGBT laws and culture meant that they could never be together. That pushed her to devote her life to creating some kind of machine that could reverse his death in some way. Elliot, Mr. Robot, Darlene, and Tyrell Wellick gear up to take down the Deus Group for good. While doing that though, Elliot and Tyrell find themselves lost in the woods, Tyrell with a fatal bullet wound in his stomach. He tells Elliot that his time is up, and he wanders into the woods, coming across this strange blue light. He approaches it, and we never see him again. Elliot takes down White Rose by hacking into the Deus Group's bank accounts and wiping out all their money. But before she dies, White Rose still manages to trigger her weird machine that's supposed to reverse everything bad that's ever happened. And then, the finale of the show gets real trippy. Elliot gets transported to an idyllic parallel world where he has everything he's ever wanted. We're meant to believe that this is the result of White Rose's machine. But eventually, Mr. Robot explains what's really going on. This is a fantasy playing out inside Elliot's head. We also get a full explanation of what's going on with his multiple personalities. Aside from Mr. Robot, his mom, his younger self, and to an extent the viewers that he talks to, it turns out that the Elliot we've been watching this whole time is another personality called the Mastermind, who took over at some point just before the start of the show in order to take down all the bad guys who might one day hurt Elliot. And the real Elliot has been trapped in this fantasy world for this whole time. At the end of the show, the Mastermind gives up control, and the real Elliot is finally restored to consciousness. Okay, that's all the information that the show gives us directly. But what the heck did it all mean? The way I see it, there are basically two major questions that need explaining. What's the deal with Elliot's multiple personalities? And what exactly was White Rose and the Deus Group trying to do? What's in the box? Let's start with Elliot's personalities. The show's finale pretty much answers this, but it throws a lot of information at you at once, so I wouldn't blame you if you didn't process it all right away. Breaking it down as clearly as possible, here's how this works. 
Elliot had a really horrible childhood that put a lot of strain on his mental well-being. So from a very early age, Elliot began creating separate people within his head to shield himself from all the terrible stuff that happens to him. The first to be created was Mr. Robot, a father figure who, unlike his real father, would actually protect him from danger. He came into being because of Elliot's father's abuse. The first time Mr. Robot manifested that we know of is when he took control of Elliot to jump out that window. He could have manifested before that, but it's not confirmed either way. Later, he created a personality that took the form of his mother, who gives voice to all Elliot's insecurities and doubts. We don't get to see a lot of her, except in Season 2, when he's in jail and he's imagining that he's living with his mother. He'd given himself over to her to get away from Mr. Robot. There's also a personality of his younger self, who takes on whatever abuse is too much for Elliot to tolerate. Those are pretty straightforward. But then things get a little more complicated with the Mastermind personality. The Elliot we've been following all this time isn't actually the real Elliot. It's been the Mastermind this whole time. A few weeks or months before the beginning of the show, Elliot's mind decided that there was too much evil in the world that could hurt him. So it created the Mastermind to destroy all the evil in the world. He locked the real Elliot in the endlessly looping fantasy world that we see in the finale, and set out trying to destroy anyone and everyone who might hurt him, starting with the corporation who poisoned his hometown and got his dad killed. Besides that, the Mastermind also forgot. He forgot that his dad abused him. He forgot that the other personalities existed. He forgot that he jumped out that window. And he forgot that Darlene was his sister. He even forgot that he wasn't the real Elliot. After taking down White Rose and the Daves group, he gave up control and released Elliot back into the world, having defeated as much evil as he could. All this also means that, other than the occasional flashbacks to Elliot as a child, and the last few minutes of the show, we don't really get to see much of the real Elliot. Finally, there are the voyeurs. That's us, the viewers. The ones that the Mastermind has been talking to and calling his imaginary friend. We're a part of Elliot's mind, too. Our purpose and role in all this requires some reading between the lines, but from what I can tell, we exist to give the Mastermind moral support, to cheer him on and motivate him to keep going on his quest to destroy evil. And when that quest has ended, the show also ends, and we no longer have anything to watch. You are not Elliot. You are the Mastermind. Just another personality. Then the other question. What was White Rose planning, and why? This one is more complicated, and it requires some educated guesses. But the show generally gives us enough information to figure out most of it. Before she dies, White Rose goes on a rambling monologue about her plans to wipe out the current world and create a new world where all the suffering of the past is erased. She's light on specifics, but based on what we're told, it would likely transport every human being in the world, living and dead, into a separate dimension where they could live out a fantasy where all their desires are fulfilled. It would probably look a lot like Elliot's fantasy world that we see in the finale. Although remember that that fantasy world takes place in Elliot's mind, it's not from White Rose's machine. Fortunately or unfortunately, Elliot and Mr. Robot shut down the machine, so we never get to see it in action. There's a lot we never find out about it. We don't get to learn why it had to be built in Elliot's hometown slash the Congo. We don't know exactly what it would look like or how it would work. We don't even know if it would have worked if Elliot hadn't stopped it. But that's for good reason. Think about that premise. Everyone living in a world where they get everything they want. How would that even work? We see it play out for Elliot, one person, but when considering multiple people who have different competing wants, it creates a pretty huge paradox. The very concept is full of holes, and it doesn't get further explanation because it's literally impossible for the writers to describe it in any further detail. The whole thing was a stupid idea from the mind of a woman obsessed and driven mad with grief. Her entire existence was devoted to bringing back her lost love and creating a world where they could be together, even if her plan for doing so made no sense. That's why she was obsessed with time, by the way. Every second she spent without him was intolerable, so she strove to complete her goal as quickly as possible. Another question I want to touch on is Tyrell and that blue light he saw. Well, unlike the other questions, which have clear in-universe answers related to the plot, this blue light is clearly a metaphor, not meant to be taken literally or connect to any of the other mysteries. There are multiple ways to interpret it, but to me it seems pretty clear that this was meant to show him accepting his death. Throughout the episode, he keeps hearing strange sounds in the woods that he calls the sounds of death that really freak him out. Death. But later, he moves towards the sounds, and approaches the blue light with a smile. He's been fighting so hard for so long. This is the moment where he finally passes on to the next life and finds peace. He achieved what White Rose couldn't. He entered a world where he no longer has to suffer. There aren't all that many significant questions or plot points to keep track of in this show. The thing that trips people up, I think, is not that the show is complicated, but that it lies to you. People watching can come to believe that the show is not a reliable source, and that they can't trust anything they're being told. 
it's really easy to let your mind go wild coming up with ridiculous theories that mostly boil down to, what if, insert plot point here, wasn't actually real and Elliot was just imagining it all. But I would advise that you don't fall down that hole. You won't find anything satisfying at the bottom of it. I've talked about stories lying to you in some of my other videos. If you want anything resembling a satisfying answer, you have to assume that everything you see in the show is real, except for the things that the show clearly identifies as imaginary. Otherwise, all you'll get out of the show is a big old headache. So, those are all of Mr. Robot's mysteries explained. But is this show a good mystery box story? Is it satisfying and entertaining to try and untangle these questions as a viewer? Let's go through the 10 elements of a good mystery box story and see how it holds up. And just a reminder that this is not necessarily a judgment on the quality of the show. It's only an assessment of the puzzle aspect of the show. Now, right up front, I should say that this isn't really a mystery box story. I anticipated having the lowest score out of any previous videos I've made in the series. But its plot still shares a lot in common with the typical mystery box, and both fans and critics still engage with it as if it were a puzzle in need of solving. So I'll take a look and see where the mystery box formula colors the edges of the show's writing. To start, no, there's no big opening mystery to start the show. The closest thing we get is Elliot talking to us as his imaginary friend. We don't get any explicit hints that something more is happening until the end of Season 1, where we learn that Elliot and Mr. Robot are the same person. After that point, you start wondering what else the show has misled you about. Eventually, the show gives us a handful of questions to chew on, namely over Elliot's personalities and the Dark Army's plans, and a sprinkling of smaller questions like who killed Romero, where Tyrell was in Season 2, and the blue light in the forest. Mysteries like this pop up now and again, but they begin and end pretty simply, and hardly intertwine. It's missing that mystery box element of every new answer beginning three new questions, and disparate plot points relating to each other in unexpected ways. Stories like this are the whole reason Rule Number 4 exists. Mr. Robot mainly derives his intrigue and mystery through bombshell plot twists, like the initial one where we learn the truth about Mr. Robot. A cool twist to be sure, and one that I can certainly relate to, but not a mystery box type reveal. This reveal isn't the answer to any sort of question. In a mystery box story, the audience has to get a chance to wonder about this kind of thing first, before the reveal. Between that, the reveal that Elliot was in jail, the truth behind the window incident, and the final mastermind reveal, we're constantly getting answers to questions that we didn't even know we should be asking. The show is full of plenty of shocking twists and turns, but hardly any clues or breadcrumbs to have the audience guessing about them ahead of time. At four seasons, the show is a reasonable size, but the plot isn't big or complicated enough to stand with a typical mystery box story. And in terms of pacing, more often than not, at any given point the story will have zero mysteries. There's not enough of that kind of spreading out of information to grab the attention of someone who likes to decode complicated plots. And then there's the question of non-diegetic elements. As I mentioned, a lot of the show features elements filtered through Elliot's perspective, and it uses that unreliable perspective to trick you. Pretty much all of its big reveals involve Elliot and the audience seeing and hearing things that aren't really there. Plus more non-literal moments like Tyrell and the Blue Light. To the show's credit, it's able to delineate what's real and what's not well enough that the audience shouldn't get confused. When a reveal like this happens, it's pretty easy for viewers to adjust their understanding to keep the real and the imagined separate. But there's still a sizable chunk of the audience who falls into a spiral after watching, going, What if X was never real? Which is not what you want in a mystery box story. Is this a satisfying ending to whatever mysteries we had? Eh, not really. The show answers any questions about Elliot's personalities pretty thoroughly but not so much when it comes to White Rose's machine. If it were one of many mysteries, then this vagueness would be fine. But considering that this was pretty much the only major plot point that was even allowing me to act like this counts as a mystery box story, it's not enough. To be clear though, I think that this was the right narrative decision, for reasons I've already explained. Just from a mystery box perspective, this isn't a satisfying sequence of questions and answers. I'll give it this though, the final season plot twists were definitely set up in advance. Going back and looking over the first season, you'll find tons of little hints that suggest the true nature of Elliot's identities. It's pretty brilliant, especially how going back after the first season, you think most of them are hinting at the fact that Elliot and Mr. Robot are the same person, but they're actually hinting at both at the same time. Something is going on with you, Elliot. You have not been the same the past couple of months. And finally, how do the mysteries and the characters intertwine? Well, um, I'm not going to knock the show's excellent character work. Elliot and the others go through a ton, and the show makes them feel incredibly well-rounded. 
But there's so little mystery box stuff in the show that I don't even think this question applies. All of the best character-related gut punches come from big, unexpected, unpredictable bombshells. Not the mystery box style questions and answers. To wrap up, let's do a trope rundown. What plot elements show up in Mr. Robot that also show up in tons of other mystery box stories? You know, despite Mr. Robot barely qualifying as a mystery box, the weird thing is, it has really strong examples of every mystery box story trope. The big organization pulling things behind the strings is the Dark Army and White Rose, duh. There are a few characters withholding information from us. White Rose, Mr. Robot, of course, and even Elliot himself, who directly lies to the viewer multiple times. The majority of episodes begin with flashbacks, and the show makes great use of non-linear plot construction to conceal and reveal important events. The FBI uses a conspiracy board to track down F-Society, although since the story follows Elliot, the FBI are always playing catch-up, and every question on the board is something the audience already knows. It even has the almost reveal, where a character gets cut off before saying something important. You are not Elliot. This show might not have a lot of specific mysteries and puzzle solving, but I can see why a lot of people feel inclined to group it with other mystery box stories. It has a similar vibe to it, you know? Mr. Robot is a really cool, unique show. It's mind-bending and disorienting to watch, just like a lot of good Mystery Box shows. But when you get down to the way it's constructed, it's not a Mystery Box show. It's something completely different. I'm not here to complain about that or tear this show down. I just want to analyze this as an example that's close, but not quite, to further differentiate and explain the genre's working definition I've created. But Mr. Robot is still worth watching. And whether or not you like Mystery Box stories, there still might be a lot you can get out of it. Mr. Robot gets a final Mystery Box rating of 2 out of 10. Damn! That's no way to treat a caddy?